Well, we're back in uh, COVID lockdown again. Uh, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to have a closer look at the Humber Super Snipe. Uh, 1953 Mark IV. This is one of the uh, earlier Mark IVs, which you can tell from the, uh, the shorter chrome stripe on the front door. The later Mark IVs had that stripe going over most of the door. Inside at the uh, instrument panel, you can see we've got the speedo in the centre, oil pressure and water temperature on the right, sorry, on the left, uh, fuel gauge and amp meter on the right, and got the various knobs and as there as well. I've taken the speaker grill off for the moment to uh, replace the fuse in there. Got the uh, cigarette lighter, parking, sorry, dash um, dashboard lights, headlights. Then on this side we've got the, the wipers, ignition key and the starter button. Handbrake is down here on the right. As, as well as the bonnet catch. Got a uh, electric clock up there, rear view vision mirror, my uh, toll road electronic tag. The car's uh, original, apart from the addition of seat belts. A, uh, a bit of extra wiring down here to uh, put flashing indicators on but the uh, original semaphore uh, indicators still work as well so this is the uh, limousine version so it has a glass partition between the front and rear seats it's a bit hard to see there i'll just and for the chauffeur it has a a privacy lock So again, addition of seat belts in the back, original leather seats, the uh, partition window is unlocked by that lever, and then it's uh, manual, it's spring-loaded, but you can pull it down, lock it in place again, and uh, when you release the block, it'll spring back up and you just help it up the rest of the way. Also a cigarette lighter in the back ashtray. Uh, this button for the dome light. Uh, hand pulls for the passengers there. Okay, let's have a look at the engine. Uh, the Mark IV Humber Super Snipe came with their new, what they called the Blue Ribbon engine, 253 cubic inches straight six, which is a step up from their previous Mark III Super Snipe, which had a, uh, a four litre side valve engine, six litre, I'm oh, sorry, six cylinder again. So obviously we've got the battery, got the starting solenoid just there. Lucas Electric. So the cam shaft is on this side of the engine, runs the uh, distributor. Where is it? Down there. Bit hard to see. Plus also the mechanical fuel pump down there which you can also prime. Prime manually. So we've got the fuel pump down there, original fuel filter there, but there's been a, a more modern fuel filter inserted in the line there. 
looks like the original radiator, radiator hoses and clamps. On this side we've got the uh, Stromberg carburetor, feeding air from the, I forgot to say, the, uh, the oil bath air cleaner. So the, uh, these engines have a automatic choke, running off the exhaust manifold temperature there, the lever up to the, uh, up to the carburetor, which operates the, the top butterfly valve. Oil filter down there. It's a little, I don't know if you can see it. A little tap on the side of the engine block there. I'm not sure what that's for. Perhaps to empty the, uh, the water out of the engine block. Generator rather than an alternator, DC generator. Uh, these cars were originally wired up with uh, positive earth. This one's since been converted to negative earth. see it from here but there's a recirculating ball steering box down there and I must say it's still quite happy to cruise along at 70 miles an hour 110 kilometers an hour it's quite a slow revving engine maximum torque at 1400 rpm that might be one reason why they last so long, they didn't work too hard in the high roof range. Windscreen wiper motor there. Various um, holes for heating, if it had the heating installed, which it doesn't, this model. The other thing I should say, compared to the previous Super Snipe, the Mark III, it's got uh, front coil springs. The previous Mark III had a transverse leaf spring. This is probably uh, Humber during the Second World War were making armoured cars and aircraft parts. Um, it didn't do much in the uh, developing their civilian cars, so this was uh, a few years after the war when they were getting around to updating everything, but uh, the previous Mark III was still using an engine from they first introduced in 1936, the 4-litre uh, the side valve. Uh, this blue ribbon um, 253 cubic inch, which is about 4.14 litres, was also used in their Comet trucks. So all original except from the couple of things I've noted, a, uh, a flashing uh, indicator lights have been added to the front and the back, and uh, seat belts have been added inside, but they're, they're about the only uh, modifications to the car. Engines all original, apart from that uh, fuel filter just there. The oil filter is still the um, removable element inside. You unbolt it from the bottom, take it off. There's a little screw there on the, uh, the back of the uh, generator. You give that half a turn every now and again, it pushes some uh, grease down onto the bearings. 
Same with the water pump. So the water pump has a twist top there, which you give half a turn every now and again. Again to push grease into the water pump bearing. And I think that's all I can uh, show you today. Uh, it's got the um, the dreaded Lucas Electrics, but I haven't had any any problems with it. Obviously, a new battery. Uh, you can see I've had to pack it out with a bit of wood there, so it clamps in. The uh, the older original batteries are obviously much bigger. This is got plenty of cranky amps. You can see how much gap there is in the uh, battery tray for the bigger battery. Let's, uh, let's go have a look in the boot. So the boot was uh, considered quite big for its day. Can't remember off the top of my head the cubic feet. Have a look inside. Got the spare wheel in a uh, bit of a well in the boot floor there. This uh, car, because it's a limousine version, came with a hydraulic jack. Yeah, I'll just have a look down the left hand side of the car. Fuel filler. Little door on the cap which is attached to the fuel pipe so you don't lose it missing the rubber that used to be around there 14 inch wheels said it cruises still cruises along quite happily at uh, I usually sit on about uh, 100 kilometers per hour 60 miles an hour but uh, the uh, reported top speed back in the day was in the 90 mile per hour region 97 might have been a bit less than that uh, I've had it up to 70 miles an hour but uh, it's fast enough for me So these, these uh, Humbers, Humbers was uh, once a favourite of royalty. The uh, Queen Mother had a, uh, her own personal Humber in the day and these, these types of Humbers, this is a touring limousine, these types of hum Humbers were used in the uh, 1954 Royal Tour to Australia, as well as Daimlers and uh, various other cars, but mainly it's the Daimlers and the Humbers that uh, carried the Queen and Prince Philip around. So, that's probably all I've got for you today. Uh, thanks for watching.